Hi, this is Chris at OPT, and over my many years working here, I've been asked several times how to get started in MaxMDL. When you load the software, this is what you see. You see menus, which have little drop downs here. You see a row of images. Some installs may have more or fewer. And then usually they'll have the screen stretch window here. This will become important later when we actually are acquiring pictures. The first and most important thing is to find the CCD camera here. It may not look much like your CCD camera, but that's what it's supposed to be. If you click on that, it brings up the camera control window, which you can control up to two cameras and two filter wheels. So if you want to connect to your camera, this is assuming you already have the ASCOM platform installed, you already have the drivers installed. You go to set up camera and it drops down and you can choose from a list here. So if you're connecting an ASCOM camera, you connect this way. That can be like some of the ZWO cameras using an ASCOM driver. Others like SBIG Universal, Starlight Express, QSI will install using their own software. You'll notice we don't see some manufacturers like QSI or FLI on here. That's just because they get installed when you actually install the driver from the manufacturer. They won't show up in the list before that. So for now we're going to choose simulator and hit OK. Same thing with filter wheels. If you use a monochrome camera with a filter wheel, clicking on here will allow you to choose which brand or manufacturer of filter wheel you have and then you can define the filter positions. Now you're gonna have to make sure that you record when you install the filters which order is which so that you can give them a name. If you do have an automated focuser, later on we can discuss the focus offset column, but for right now, ignore it. So let's assume I have these four filters in this order. I hit OK. Now camera one is usually your imaging camera, imaging filter wheel. Camera two in this case would be your guider. So in this case I can go to simulator and we can set that up this way to provide us with a realistic interpretation of how a camera is going to work. So we connect, as long as all the drivers work, as long as all of the devices are connected, that will bring everything that's plugged in up. If you get an error message, you may need to check to make sure your USB cables are fully seated or make sure that your settings are correct for the equipment you actually have attached. Sometimes I change camera configurations, pull one thing off, put another thing on, and you run into the situation where the image train you shot with last night isn't the same as you're shooting with tonight. So just make sure to set it up each night for what you're actually going to connect. Now you notice they have a cooler here. If you have a camera that is cooled, you can set your temperature right here. Negative 20 is the default. If I hit on for cooler, it will bring it up saying negative 20, negative 20. Now usually your guider will not show a temperature unless it's cooled and you're not gonna cool down nearly as quickly as the simulator did. It's gonna take sometimes a couple minutes for your camera to cool down, but this is the temperature your sensor is actually reading. This is the temperature you want it to cool down to. And some cameras will actually show a percentage of how hard the cooler is working. This is all in the setup tab here. We haven't moved off the setup tab yet, but now we're connected, camera's cooled down. We can now go to the expose tab. Now you have a few presets here. Normally you can mess with them if you feel like it. Find DSO, focus will be a shorter exposure. Find a star might be two by two binning. But in this case, you set your exposure here. You can also type it in. So if I want 300 seconds, I can do that. Or I can just drop it back down to two seconds in this case. You can adjust the binning of your sensor if it's capable. You can choose whether you want wide binning the same or different, and you can choose whether you want to image with camera one or camera two. Whichever one you don't image with on this tab will wind up being accessed from the guide tab here. If you select start, it's gonna take a mock two second exposure. It's moving the filter to luminance, taking exposure, reading out. It took a dark frame there with the simulator. So this is my image, which they have simulated five stars. If I take another image, 
they'll show the difference caused by noise or drift or any other features. So each exposure can be tackled the same way. Now you're not likely to be in focus for your first exposure. So you can turn on continuous mode and then what you do is it'll allow you to refresh the exposure over and over again until you find the best focus. Once you found focus, you can hit stop. Now's the time, if you're going to set up a guider, to go to the guide tab. Click start, and it will bring up the second window here. So this is my auto guider. I can click on that, I can tell it to calibrate, and it will tell the telescope to move one of four directions. And the red line you see here is showing the actual calibration occurring. So you'll notice here it gives you the position in X and Y. Here it actually shows the star moving around. You want something that looks roughly like a right angle. That means that you have everything set up pretty much correctly. Now that we have this set, we can click on there and start tracking. And it grabs a star and it automatically does tracking error adjustments here. So if you watch this, it gives you the X and Y error. At that point, you're ready to set up. You can take it a single exposure or you can go to auto save and actually set up for a sequence of exposures. That's something that we will tackle in the next video, but this should at least get you out setting up your equipment, guiding, and able to take single exposures. This is Chris at OPT. Thanks for watching.